Hey everybody, this is Jason with Lone Star Catfish. So, you know, it's been a long time since I put a video out. Um, you know, it's been a crazy year. Um, the reasons of which oh, I'm sure you're not interested in, so we're just going to get right to it. So, you know, I missed my Fishmas video for 2021. Um, again, for the same reasons why I haven't posted a video. Um, but it was such a beautiful day here today. Um, I wanted to come out. I'm actually in the same spot that I was in my last Fishmas video, sitting on this uh, shallow hump. Uh, casting out in front of the camera to a drop-off that's basically running along the edge of the old river channel. Um, so I've got all four of my lines out there. I'll probably get a couple more and put them back up here in the shallow area uh, just to try to catch anything that's running up in there. Uh, and hopefully uh, I'm gonna land me some good-sized fish. That's my goal today. This is where I caught you know, my personal best blue um, you know, almost a year ago. So I'm hoping I can, I can duplicate that. Get it on camera this time will be my key. So I'm gonna try to keep my camera cool. Um, it's a beautiful day. It started off in the you know low 40s. It'll probably get up into 60s. Um, so the sun is out, short or long sleeve, and I'm already getting hot. Uh, so I got the sleeves rolled up. But it's a beautiful day. Let's see if we can turn it into a beautiful fishing day. So we'll see you. All right. So <laughs> it's been 30, 35 minutes. This is about the best I've managed to muster so far. A couple other little nibbles, a couple decent takedowns, but no hookups. So I'm guessing it's stuff like this, you know lipping it and running off um, I'm thinking I'm gonna move up a little bit up the river um, same type of setup setting some shallow water cast out to the deep but um, you know I may give this another couple minutes just to see but this is definitely not producing so I don't want to waste too much time here but I guess the skunk is off but that's not even a keeper so I don't even know if that counts as a skunk buster but uh, I don't know we'll check this spot out another five minutes and then uh, probably gonna move up river all right, so I'm definitely gonna move up river. So I just started pulling my lines in. Every single one of them, zero bait. And I really can't tell you that I heard or saw any bites on any of those rods. That tells me there's little fish out there. They're just playing with the line. Not even enough to move the weight. And I've got three to four ounce weights on these things. So not even enough to move the weight. And they're just pulling that bait off. So I'm not gonna invest any more time or bait in that. I'm gonna move up and see if we can't find something else. Okay, so I've come up the river a little bit, pretty much in the same configuration. I'm on sort of the east side of the river, setting in about three foot of water, casting out across the drop off. It's only you know eight or nine foot out there, um, but you know that that is a spot where I'd had some luck um, doing some planer board prospecting. Um, the last couple times I've come out, you know, and didn't bring the camera, so I caught some fish going through there. So I thought I'd set up right here and throw out there. So. You know, that last spot, you know, like I said, I pulled in every rod and there was no bait. And the only fish, that tiny fish that I caught was on one of my back rods. And I had just one ounce weight on that because it's up in the flats. And so that fish was able to move that weight around and I was able to actually see um, that I had a bite. My assumption is it was the same kind of fish that were out on these front rods, but they can't move three, four ounce weights around without it, with me noticing it. So they're able to just to have free reign of that leader, get that bait off of there, and then I'm left with nothing. So I didn't want to waste my time anymore down there. Um, depending on how things go here, I might hit that spot on the way back because um, it might open up a little bit um, as, as the temperatures warm up a little bit. Um, but we'll give this spot a try. I've never actually fished in this spot. Um, uh, on the bottom like this, you know, anchored in, in tight lines. I've just been pulling planer boards through here. Uh, but we'll see. Um, again, beautiful day, so there's not really much that can ruin it. I've got the skunk out, so I'm just going to lay here, catch some rays, uh, and relax. Take down. Haven't felt anything yet. God, it almost feels like it might be hung up. Let's give it some slack. Oh, he may have got me hung up. had this before where they get on there they get themselves hung up I'm gonna keep a little tension 
Uh, I've not felt anything though. Usually you'll feel at least a little bit of tapping on the line. At this point all I'm feeling is snag. It's a good takedown though. Ooh, there, there was that little tap. I think he's still on there. He's just got himself wrapped up on something. Uh, and it makes it so difficult when I've got these power pulls down. Because I can't go out there to him. I'd have to reel in all these lines, pull the power poles, put the trolling motor in, and go out there. Yeah, he's definitely on there. When I let some slack out, he takes the slack. So he's just wrapped around something. I'm just going to stand here and hold it. And let's see if he works itself out of it. I think he came loose. All right, got him, got him. Got him, got him, got him. Boy, I tell you what, that takes some patience. Fortunately, I didn't have to wait too long. <laughs> I guess I'm not very good at having patience. All right, let's see what we got here. My assumption is he's hooked pretty good if we went through all of that. All right, good fish. Good fish for me out here. Try to get him on the tangle here. There we go. Oh, not the best hook set. <laughs> I mean, I was not in there very good. I, sometimes I wonder about these hooks. Maybe there's maybe I just used them too long and they've doled up. 20 and a half, 20 and a half inches, not bad, definitely a good fish, had some fun with him, got himself tangled up out there, but we were patient and he was able to get himself loose, so let's put him back, all right, this could be a double here. got one here and there's a brush pile or something that he almost got hung up in so I'm gonna have to be a little more aggressive getting him over that I got another one hitting here already All right, this one's not as big Again, not a great hook set. I mean, it's not getting buried in his lip. So, not very big. Good takedown, though. Decent sized fish working one right here. Decent size, of course, meaning it wasn't a baby. <laughs> Fun to catch, though. That's all I'm looking for. Something's playing around here. We'll be more aggressive here. Keep him up, try to get above whatever's out there. He's pulling pretty good. Hopefully he's helping me set that hook. He's coming at me now. Coming at me now, coming at me now, coming at me now. There we go, now he's got some tension. All right, that's a good fish. 
That's a good fish. Let me get this out of the way here. It's a good fish. Not a good hook set. I need to get this in quickly. I said not a very good hook set, but it's actually good. He's all tangled up here. There we go. All right, I don't know. I don't know if you can see that. I'll zoom it in. Got the point is coming out there, so that's good. Now, again, um, when I first saw it, it looked like it was more down in his mouth, but that's the kind of hook set you know, that I'm looking for because you're not going to lose that fish. All right, he's 21 and one half. Well, he's not far off from that last fish, and other than maybe an inch, I, I'd be lying if I told you it wasn't the same fish. So, okay, look, I'm looking at that fish. His dorsal fin, he's got a, just a little bit of a, a tear there, and one of those dorsal bones is just kind of bare and sticking out. We're going to remember that, right? So if I see that again, I know I got the same fish. But you know what? I don't care. Five, five, six, seven more times. That's just fun to catch. So let's get him back in the water. Again, good choice. Good choice for me to move. That's a tough thing for me. I don't know why. I just, I hate changing spots, you know? All the time that it takes. And it's not that much time, but I feel like it's a lot of time getting set up, getting the lines out. You know, then I'm always thinking, you know, what am I missing there? If I'd have just waited, uh, definitely good good that I moved. All right, one thing I'm definitely finding is there is a brush pile, maybe a tree setting maybe, I'm going to call it 20 yards out. Um, I'm throwing over it, but when I get these things in, I need to be getting up and aggressively reeling uh, those things and try to keep them as high as I can. Because if I, if I try to play with them too much out there, they're going to dive and they're going to get wrapped up in that both of these did that um, fortunately I was able to, to get them all, all three out speak of the devil alright there's a good one that's a good one right, I'm trying to be aggressive Coming at me, keep some tension on him. All right, I think he's in the safe zone here for getting snagged, so let me calm down, step down. I'm sure he's gonna see the boat and make a run here. Right. Another good fish. Again, for out here, for me, that's a, this, these, are, these are good fish. So I just talked about this rod, and I, I let a little line out and, and kind of moved it a little bit. You know, sometimes I feel like that bait can just get buried in something, and I just kind of pull it out a little bit, and you know, maybe stir up some scent, or it could absolutely have nothing to do with it. I don't know. He's just shy of 20 inches, but definitely not the same fish. You know, but a good fish, right? Anything 18 and over for me, I'm really happy with, right? You know, 12 to 18 or, you know, maybe you're eating fish, you're sandwich fish. You know, 18 to maybe that mid-20s are, are really fun, exciting, I like that. And, and you get over that and, and that's when I get a little giddy. So, it's good fish. Good day. Definitely glad I moved. All right, I want to take a quick second to address something here. Um, <laughs> you know, I... This is a superstition that I really didn't know about until a couple months ago. I was watching um, you know, Justin on Kayak Catfish, and he was joking around with one of his buddies uh, about a banana and having a banana in the boat, and each of them was kind of stuffing it in each other's cooler just to try to give them bad luck. I literally had never heard of that before, but I love bananas. Um, but I was sitting in the back of the boat here a minute ago, 
um, had only caught that one small fish. And I opened up my lunch bag, get something to drink, and noticed that my wife had put a banana in my bag. And at first I was like, oh, how sweet, right? But then I thought, wait a minute, I don't think you're supposed to have a banana on the boat. Again, I'm a former baseball player, so you, all you gotta do is tell me about a superstition, and suddenly I believe in it. So, I don't know how the rules work with that, but I like bananas, so I opened it, I ate it all, and I threw the peel out in the water. And I promise you, I've caught every one of those fish literally within five minutes after that happened. Um, I don't really know what to say about that, other than I'm probably not going to bring bananas on the boat anymore. And if I do, I'm going to eat them immediately. Um, but it's pretty funny. If somebody knows the origin of that or knows where that comes from, I'd love for you to let me know. Because I had never heard of that. But like I said, all you got to do is tell me about a superstition and I'm going to start thinking about it. But uh, the banana is off the boat and suddenly I've got three, you know, almost 20 plus inch fish in the boat. Or four, I guess, at this point. So, pretty happy about that. So another another nice fish so you know there are times when I'm out here and you know you don't get a lot of action you just got to let bait soak and then there are other times where if you're getting if I'm getting hits and bites and catching fish on multiple of my poles but nothing on the others you got to check bait and so I pulled in three the three rods that hadn't had any action no bait um, rebaited them threw them out there before I could even get the third one baited one of them already had a fish on. Again, nothing huge, but a good sized fish. This is probably in that. Yeah, it's 15 and a half, so not bad. Um, good hook set. Um, and then I, I've, I've heard, I heard some other little nibbles on some of these rods. So again, sometimes you just gotta wait. Other times, if, you know, if I'm getting hits and bites all around, and I'm not on some rods, there's probably no bait, and that's exactly what went, went down. Uh, and I was rewarded with another fish right there, so. Another thing I'm really happy to see right now is there's bait fish all over the place around me. I'm just seeing them hop, hop. Several pelicans are coming in and hitting. You might have even once seen, seen one behind me as I was talking just there. But they're out all around me hitting, so there's bait fish all in here. So definitely in a good spot. fish on there? There's a fish on there. <laughs> so I'm checking the bait on this. Getting it snagged. Can't pull it in. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to pull the snag out. Start to let some slack out just to see if I can't get it loose. Doom, boom, boom. I start feeling a fish on there. So this is another one of these situations where the fish is on. Gotten himself tangled up, and I'm just gonna have to let him try to figure it out. The problem is, there's no telling how long he's been out there and what type of mess he's gotten himself into. Oh, yeah. I mean, so it's wrapped around something, clearly. When I get some slack, it's able to take off and just pull that slack out. So. I mean, part of me doesn't want to keep giving him slack because it just gives him more line to tangle up. But I got to get some slack to let it come off of that. Just come loose. I think I got him now. Oh yeah. Oh, patience, baby. Patience. 
Yeah, baby. Got to send the hook sets good, but you never know what kind of frayed line you've got. Oh, you know what that is? I haven't seen one of these in a while. That is a big old channel cat. About 19 and a half. So that's pretty good. That's kind of on the low end, the low end of the bigger ones that I've had today. You know, I've had a couple, couple small ones, but it's a good fish. Look how slender he is, a big wide head. Definitely a channel cat. Let's do a quick recap of my setup here. So, you know, I've got my power poles um, down in the back, um, sitting at about three and a half to four foot of water. Um, there's really no wind to speak of today. Um, normally, I like to put the nose downwind. Uh, that helps just keep the boat from swaying too much. There's not really much wind today to speak of, so I was able to position it the way I wanted. But I've got about an eight foot, and I probably can't see this, but it's just a just a regular pole. Uh, and it's, it's a power pole brand, but it's one that's got a you know, T-handle on top, and I can just push that in the mud. So I've got that up here on my right side, and I just push that down in the mud as much as I can, and then I just lash it to my cleat over here, and that just keeps the nose from swaying too much, especially, I mean, I do it all the time when I've got the power poles, but especially like this where there's not much wind, um, and I can kind of put the boat where I want, but the what little wind there is will want to sway the boat, and then of course I'll get some wake from boat traffic and stuff like that. And so that just helps keep me more or less still, and if I do have some sway, it's, it's fixed, right? Like I know how far I'm going one way, how far I'm going to go the other way and that way I can get all my rods and, and lines set appropriately and not constantly dragging or having to leave a lot of slack so um, that's what I really love about both the power poles that I have in the back and then the small power pole or the manual one I should say uh, in the front it's a really great setup So I was holding out, I wanted to at least each rod to have something happen that made me try to pull the line in. Had a great takedown right there, close things out. Another good hook set. These uh, these these hooks right here, I have to get in and see what the brand is. They've done a really good job today. Each one of them has given me a really good hook set. Look at that guy again, nothing huge, but a good size fish fun huge takedown again I, I i'm fishing 15 pound test um pretty you know medium rod so so that's a good takedown that's a good fish that's a fun fight um definitely a way to end it if in fact this is the last one hopefully I, i'm getting some nibbles here and there hopefully you know i'll try to reel down on everything he's right at 20 inches maybe maybe an eighth over but again good fish fun fight thought i might have had a world beater right there because he had his head pointed the other direction the whole time so he he felt strong but uh good way to end it if that's the way it is all right everybody so i'm fixing to call it um i i've rebaited everything fresh and put it out there i'm gonna give it another five to ten minutes really haven't you know haven't caught a fish in a while haven't got any significant bites in a while um so like i said i freshened everything up and we'll give it another five or ten minutes you know pretty much the next fish i catch will be the end of it and i'll put everything away um but it was a good day, you know. I, I was I was happy with myself for giving up on that first spot. You know, I gave it plenty of time. Really had nothing except nibbles. Was losing my bait, um, so moved up here. This is the first time I fished this spot, at least this way. You know, with uh, tide lines. Um, you know, I've pulled my planer boards through here a couple times, but I had luck, right? Just right out there, 
where I put most of my lines. And sure enough, I came here and I was able to catch a lot of the similar size fish that I had been catching on my planer boards through, going through here. So this is a good spot. I'll definitely come back here. I mean, this whole bank right here is real nice because it's a flat and then drops off into the channel. So, But, you know, it was good to get back out. It was such a gorgeous day. I mean, I'm always happy to catch fish, but this could have been one of those get skunked days. Um, and I would have been, you know, maybe not as happy, but but happy nonetheless. So that's about it. Um, it's definitely good to be back out here. Um, good to fish. Good to put something on video again and put that out there. Um, but I'll try to get out and do this a little more often as the as the winter finishes out and we move back into spring. Of course, <laughs> saw me with my shirt off. I mean, it's hot out here and it's middle of January, so it's not going to take much for uh, you know the weather. Um, you know, to, to, to start getting hotter and hotter. So that's all I've got. Until next time, we'll see you. Oh, baby, too much attention. Not enough attention. But you're gonna